Hi, Hillsborough MB family. Um, as you might be guessing, as you've been watching the media, um, the government has recommended that we not meet for eight weeks, and we are going to listen to that and keep doing what we've been doing. Pay attention, stay, you know, watch on Facebook and on our website for more updates about what that's going to look like. But it will be um, Sunday morning like it was this last Sunday morning. I encourage you maybe to get together with another family or two or a person or two so that you're not alone if you can and watch together. I'm at 1040, but there'll be more details on that uh, soon. And um, it's an exciting time that even though it's, it's difficult, it is a time that God is using and will use. And uh, so looking forward to what God's going to do through this. Um, I wanted to encourage you with um, a passage from 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Uh, and there's a sermon that I'll have a link on here to David Jeremiah. I did this. Um, I heard that first, and I don't know if he was the first, but when the coronavirus was really strong in China, a pastor there did a sermon on Jehoshaphat and others have been doing that now as well. And uh, so watch his, his he, he, can, he can do it way better than me. But I just wanted to encourage you to do a couple thoughts on this. Uh, um, starting at verse two, there were some armies that were uh, surrounding Judah and King Jehoshaphat. <clears throat> Then uh, it says, verse 2, it says, Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, A vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in Hazazon Tamar, that is in Gedi. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat uh, resolved to inquire of the Lord. So he went to the Lord in prayer, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard and said, Now, listen to Jehoshaphat's prayer. It's really encouraging. He's, and, and then and pay special attention to the last line. Uh, but, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, If calamity comes upon us with sword or judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress and you will hear and save us. But now, here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession that you gave us as an inheritance. Our God, Will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. May that be our prayer. That last part, just to repeat that. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. We, we live in a time of uncertainty, and um, people are afraid and worried um, about Economics, about their jobs, about their home life, about catching the virus, uh, fear of death. It's a fear of the unknown. But God is in control. Uh, we're reminded here that God is mightier than any army. He is mightier than any disease. And God, um, we don't know what he's going to do. And we can pray that. Lord, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, and we don't know what to do but our eyes are on you. And that was their commitment. Even through it all, surrounded by these vast armies, our eyes are on you, even the uncertainty. And so what they did is their prophets then told them um, that God's going to be with them and God's going to take care 
of their enemy. And so when they went out to, to, uh, to face the armies, Jehoshaphat had his commander lead everybody in worship. And they praised God, saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. And they sang, Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. And as they began to sing praise to God, God, on his own, without them, destroyed their enemies. Uh, and so, God's got this. Uh, let's continue to pray. Lead your families in prayer. Have us have some times together. Read, talk about Jehoshaphat with them. And talk about how good God is. And that he's in control over all things. And one other thought that I would uh, like to leave you with is that in our day and age, uh, our society, of uh, it's a pluralistic society where everybody believes what they want to believe and people say things like, you can believe whatever is true for you and I believe whatever is true for me and the truth doesn't really matter. People can think and believe that it's just important that you have a belief in something and that that belief gives you comfort and that Christianity is just a crutch. But we don't believe this because it gives us comfort and because it gives us hope. At the same time, it doesn't give us comfort and hope because we believe it. We believe it because it's true and because it's true, there's comfort in that. And there's hope in that. Uh, there's hope in the fact that God listens to our prayers. There's hope in the fact that God loves us and cares for us, that we're not alone. Uh, his love endures forever. And so when we pray to God, we don't pray just so that we can feel better. We don't pray with other people just because that provides some kind of comfort. We pray because there's a God who's listening, the God of the universe. So let's take some time right now and pray to him. Dear God, I ask that you would help us now in these difficult times. We thank you that you are with us and that you have a plan. You're sovereign over all of this and it doesn't take you by surprise. Um, we don't know what the plan is. We ask that you would supernaturally, uh, miraculously send this virus into a decline, that you would build up our immunities. But we leave it up to you. It might get worse, because that might be your plan. And uh, we commit, no matter what the circumstances are, to keep our eyes on you and to praise you and to love you. We thank you that you are a God who cares. You are our Father, and we are your children. Amen.